Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family. I want to thank y'all again for being right back here tonight with the royal family and family. Of course, y'all already know that we cannot go without saying this. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish your royal ass a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And I wanted to emphasize that here tonight because I wanted to remind you of who you are. You royal kings, queens, princes, and princesses. You got to know who you are. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that you don't forget who you are. Royalty on this planet. Because there's a lot of us. There's so many of us that, quite frankly, we're still struggling with that concept because we still have a lot of the world and a lot of the strongholds of Christianity on us that tell us that we're absolutely nothing. Christianity tells us that we're Gentiles when we are actually the children of Israel. And I understand that there are so many people out there that are still struggling with that, that are in the truth. You got to remember who you are. We've been over this over and over and over again, but sometimes we just need a reminder. So that was my reminder from me to you tonight. Now, family, tonight we are going to have grown folk talk. It's not one of those lessons where you got to take the kids and put them to bed. It's not one of those. It's not one of those. But we are going to have some real life discussion tonight because tonight we're talking about discernment. And for those of you that don't know what discernment is, we're going to get into it. We'll get into it here in a second. But there's so much that's happening in our communities within ourselves, our brothers and sisters, so many things that are going on that shouldn't be. And I'm going to go ahead and call it out what it is right now. These things should not be happening, but they are. So as we see these things happen, we have to bring to the forefront and we have to talk about these things because we have to make sure that we educate each other. For instance, King Yagidian, King Marcus, King Yada, King Gino, and Queen Tanya. If y'all have not had the opportunity to view any of their lessons yet, you are missing out. You need to. Because I just remember last week me sitting back and I watched all of my brother's lessons. And I remember being so edified. All of their lessons, each and every last one of them, were completely awesome. All of them. And I want to make sure that I convey this to the family. They are our family too. Please support them. Please go check out their lesson. When I put the links out there on the community page and on Instagram, I'm doing that for a reason. I'm doing that so that you can continue to be edified because it's not only me. And I need you to understand that. It's not only me bringing these scriptures out. That's all the people that I just mentioned as well. All right. And this is for your edification because I was most certainly edified last week. I really, really was. And my brothers and my sister, I love y'all. All right. Now, family, we are going to jump into this here. I don't even think this lesson is going to be that long, but um, we're going to write it out. We're going to see. Because like I said, we're going to have some grown folk conversation tonight. So family, please. Open your Bibles to the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. We are going to kick this off with Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Because, yeah, we need to get into discernment. So as a matter of fact, before we do that, let's go ahead and get the definition of discernment. Let's get that real quick. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Discernment. Let's get the definition. All right. The definition of discernment. The ability... To judge well. In Christian context, perception in the absence of judgment with a view to obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding. So what does this mean? It means that for one, you are in these scriptures, you know what these scriptures say. So when you come into a situation, 
and you know that is wrong, or you come into a situation where you feel the vibe and the aura is off, that's discernment. There's something in the pit of your stomach, in your gut, as they say, that gut feeling, or just something around in the atmosphere that tells you, no, 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 no. Even when you come into meeting a person for the first time, there is something about your spirit that goes, uh-uh, back, no, no, no. There's something wrong with him. There's something wrong with her. That the, your spirit is not connecting with that person right there, and you feel it, but a lot of time, we go against our better judgment. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, we do. We go against our better judgment and we fool around with these people. And it doesn't have to be a sexual relationship. We're just talking about in general. You know, you meet somebody, you know, it's like, yo, this, this is my man over here or whatnot. And then all of a sudden you come to find out about your so-called man. And I'm talking about brother and brother. And you come to find out, like, yo, this, this nigga's a damn terrorist. What's, <laughs> what's wrong with the thing? He didn't show you it at first, but he shows you later. And then here you have this sister, like sister to sister, you know, and you get around here, you're like, this, 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 this a hoe. <laughs> Woo, like, okay, yo, she loose booty over here. Like, yo, hey. And then you brought her around, your man, your husband, your family like that. And then that spirit be jumping on people. I'm telling you, pushing back. And that's what the Bible tells us to do. And that's what we're going to get into tonight. That judgment, using your judgment, the discernment. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, please. The book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Let's see what this says. Watch this. As a matter of fact, start at verse 1. Let me start from the beginning. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, and that's the word I want you to key into, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, do you know what reasonable service means? This means, this means that's what you're supposed to be doing in the first place. Nothing extra. That is your basic, absolute basic way to bring yourself to the acceptance of the most high. Okay, verse two. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The will of the most high, the will of God, the will of God. Now, we've heard that so many times. You've heard it in Christianity. You've heard it in all the other little false denominations, that will of God, right? What does that mean? What does it mean to have the will of God? What is that? Let's go ahead and get it. I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4, please. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I want you to go down to verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Let's see what that is. Now, again, the Bible will always define itself. Watch this. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, sin, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Now, what we just read in Romans you have to present yourself as a living sacrifice. Here's the precept to that. Your vessel. Everything that you do in your life is supposed to represent the most high. And we're going to get more into that. But your vessel. So now that word sanctification, that is not an everyday word now, is it? So now we're going to go and find out exactly what sanctification means. Let's go ahead and get that. What does sanctification mean? And we, there's a couple of definitions that we're going to be going over tonight. Because I want to make sure that y'all understand this without a shadow of a doubt. Sanctification. The action of making or declaring something holy. Just like we mentioned earlier. That's why I told you to plant that word. The action or process of being freed from sin or purified. The action of causing something to be or seem morally right or acceptable. 
So this is really easy as far as what sanctification is. It means to present yourself as a living sacrifice. It means to keep the commandments. It means to keep them laws. It means to observe the statutes. That's what it means. That's what the father told us to do from Genesis to Revelation. Keep his commandments, right? But here you have the bondage of Christianity that tells you that you're not supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus did away with the laws. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You go out there and you willfully sin free. Go freely sin. But don't worry, because white Jesus is going to tell you you can come home. Okay. All right. So now that was sanctification. So now we're going to look further into sanctification. So now I want you to go to Leviticus chapter 20. And you're going to see exactly how to sanctify. So that is the book of Leviticus. Now, remember, we're going from the New Testament to the Old Testament to prove it. Remember, the New Testament, the Old, excuse me, the Old, the, bleh, how does this go? I see, for, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> I don't even feel like dealing with it. Leviticus chapter 20 and go down to verse 7. All right, here it is. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy for I am the Lord, your God. So that is a commandment. You are command, you, ha you have been commanded to sanctify yourself. Do you see that? Now, that is not a part of the 10 commandments. So are there other commandments throughout this Bible that we're supposed to keep? Yes. This is why the father said, study to show thyself approved. You must search the book. You have to go through the book verse after verse after verse and study to show yourself to be approved. I'm going to read this again. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Verse 8. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. He made that very clear, family. How do you sanctify yourself? By keeping the commandments. And when you keep the commandments, the Father says, now I'll sanctify you. Uh -huh. It's a two-step process. You do your work, you do what you're supposed to do, and then I'll do what I'm supposed to do. You see, that's how the Father made it. Everything in this Bible that the Father does is reactionary to what we do. If we keep the commandments, we get blessings. If we break his commandments, we get punished. And it's all a reaction. Righteousness, unrighteousness. Keeping the law, living in sin. It's all reactionary. Okay? So now, i got to ask y'all a question. If the Most High says that he wants to sanctify you, does that mean that every Israelite on this planet have a purpose? Well, let's go ahead and find out. So now I want you to go to Joshua chapter three and verse five, the book of Joshua chapter three and verse five. Now let's just see what the prophet Joshua has to say about this. Watch this. And Joshua said unto the people, which is Israel, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. So Joshua talked to all the people, as it just said right here. He told the people, if you keep the commandments, the Most High is going to do wonders through you. So again, I ask you the question. Every person that was put here on this planet, did they have a purpose? Mm. You better believe they did. Now, what happened in between that time? You had those who listened. And those that didn't. And we're going to get into so much of that. Now, I said all that and brought all that up right now because I want to show you two videos. And I'm showing two different circumstances here so that I am not accused of being one sided. I'm showing both male and female. So without any further ado, family, I want you to go ahead. Take a look at this here. Well, a surprise twist today for a murder suspect in Spring, Texas, caught in a love triangle. A woman accused of killing her lover over his other lover, 
finds out that he had a wife all along <laughs> too. Fox 26's Tiffany Justice live with this deadly affair. The wife saying the Emmy's office finally released the body to her after confusion over who was the real wife. A love triangle leaves a spring man dead. The Harris County Sheriff's Office saying an adult female, Karen Stewart, advised responding deputies that she shot her husband after he told her he was in love with another woman. That other woman was with him at the time. Karen Stewart is now in jail, charged with murder. Bond set at $75,000. The love triangle unfolding as investigators learn more. Stewart is a girlfriend of James Hardgrove, the victim. James married but recently separated. I got the call that my my husband had been shot, and um, they took him to Houston Northwest. He didn't make it. It's very hard to believe. It's, um, we've been married for 14 years. It's very hard to believe. Sandra Hartgrove, the wife, is in disbelief, saying they separated in November and that she was unaware of the other women. I've never met the person. I have no idea. My knowledge is that she's a caregiver. She says James was her best friend, and they spoke every other day. I talked to him every other day. I haven't really seen him since my nephew's wedding, but I talked to him every other day. He just recovered from COVID. He had been in the hospital. He was there five months. He couldn't walk. He had two heart attacks, a stroke, his kidneys failed, and he had just recovered from all of that. So for him to make it through all of that to end like this is, is real disheartening. Funeral services are set for this weekend. Stewart has been charged with felony murder. Reporting live, Tiffany Justice, Fox 26 News. Tonight, a horrific scene at a community center swimming pool where police say this man shot and killed his wife while her daughter was taking swim lessons. He followed her and chased her down and shot her. Like a... Like a like an animal, like an animal, like he was doing hunting. Authorities putting together the pieces as the family of 30-year-old Shandell Harris mourns. It all happened at a Jewish community center in Miami Sunday. The husband then showed up to the to the scene here and then shot her over at the pool deck. The day before the tragic scene, officials say the suspect, 45-year-old Carl Watts Jr., stabbed Harris multiple times. The city of Miami Police Department telling NBC News in a statement they were aware of that incident. But by the time it was reported to them, Watts was gone and in hiding, adding that his wife was offered shelter but refused since she would stay with her mother. So you were arrested for one count of second degree murder. I'm holding no bonds. According to the police report, Watts approached Harris and began offering her money to drop charges against him for the stabbing incident. When she refused and asked him to leave, he shot her multiple times and, quote, continued to shoot her until he ran out of live cartridges. The family of the victim in shock. She's a great mother. You know, she didn't deserve this. We reached out to Watts' attorney and they had no comment at this time. Now, details of Watts' criminal history and other pending cases coming to light. NBC News learning he's a person of interest in the disappearance of his former girlfriend in Fort Lauderdale. June 25th will make eight years that Trakita's been missing. In 2014, Trakita Scott was last seen here, leaving work to meet Watts. NBC6 reporting Scott's family publicly suspected Watts was involved. Where is she? What did you do to her? Why couldn't you be a man and move on with your life? Scott was never found, and police say her case is still open. Domestic violence is one of those crimes where sometimes we don't have the full story as quickly as we wish we did. Domestic violence is a major killer in the U.S. One study from the CDC showing that when the perpetrator was known, 50% of all women murdered were killed by their current or former intimate partner. Domestic violence kills. There's resources out there. You don't have to live that kind of life. All right. Listen. All right. <laughs> Y'all saw that. Both king and queen gone. Dead. Over. Finish. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all think for one second if these two individuals would have been following the commandments and doing what the Most High told them to do, that they would actually have a purpose on this earth. But they didn't. They did not. And what now? One is in prison and all is dead. Gone. Life wasted. Now the sister in prison She'll probably be in there for the rest of her life. 
she still has an opportunity. The other two don't. So the question that I ask you, family, do those two that are in the ground have a purpose anymore? If you said no, you smart as hell tonight, they're dead, over. Judgment, taken out on them. The father does not play around with us. And the reason why I showed y'all that because these are individuals that did not use discernment. As you can tell, they were not following the law at all. And so now they received judgment that was put in the ground by murder, death, over for them. Is that going to be some of you? Is that going to be some of your children? Is that going to be some of your loved ones, neighbors, friends, what have you? So now you have to ask yourself a question. When you see these things transpiring around you, when you see these people, what are you doing to step in? What are you doing? How are you presenting yourself as a living sacrifice to the Most High so that the Most High can work wonders through you? What are you doing? Everything that you do matters. You were brought into this truth for a reason. You cannot be slack in your work. You have to be diligent in your work. Not everybody is overly charismatic. Not everybody is as forthcoming. Not everyone has a personality like, I'll use myself as an example. Not, not everyone has a personality like me. Some of you have so much better personalities and you're still not saying anything. You're not doing anything, but listening on Friday, Saturday nights, not pulling your weight. You can't do that. You must be able to present yourself, present your vessel as a righteous purpose for those around you. Remember, you are the light of the world. Remember, you are the Illuminati. You. You have a purpose. If you are in this truth, following these laws, statutes, and commandments, and even for those of you who are watching this maybe for the first time and you're not, you have a purpose. And your purpose is is to bring as many people in Israel, black, Hispanic, and Native American, to the truth. Why? Because you are a beacon of light. You are the light bearer of this word. You walk in this truth. You have work to do. Can't stress that enough. So now, I want you to go to the book of Jude. And this is... I hate to say it, but it's one of the books that are not referenced enough because there's only one chapter and a lot of people don't go through this. I may just go ahead and do uh, this next week, maybe. But I want you to go to Jude chapter one. Uh, well, there's only one chapter. And I want you to go down to verse five. Jude chapter one and verse five. Listen to this. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And I wanted to bring that out there to you. Now, why did he say that? Let's look at this one more time. I'm going to read the last part of this here. Having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Who's that? That's us. Afterward, destroyed them that believed not. Why did he say that? Because we were taken out of Egypt, out of captivity, <laughs> put back in the position of power, and we still failed the Most High. Still. Do you understand how horrible that truly, truly is? To be saved out of captivity, put back into the prominence of power, and then go right back to screwing back up. It's unbelievable. So now, being that I read that, now I want to go down to verse 14. Pay very close attention to this family. Watch this. And Enoch also, the seventh of Adam. Now, mind you, 
what's happening right here is talking about the lineage. He, they're showing the line. Prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So the reason why I'm bringing this out here is because I'm showing you that the Most High is putting the focal point, he's putting a pinpoint on all of those that are ungodly and he's telling you the demise that they have coming. So when you do not use your discernment, when you decide that you want to go ahead and hang with this person because you know, yo, that person may be cool or whatever the case is, yo, they all right, yo, nah, yo, that's my man's in them or that's my homegirl or whatnot. Guess what? The father said, you hang with him, you dead too. Uh -huh. As we read back in Joshua, what did Joshua say? I came to warn all the people. I came to warn everybody. And then followed up right here in Jude. The Most High is coming for blood. He's coming for destruction. And how is he going to do it? He is going to do it through his angels. We cannot get around this. We have to use discernment in the things that we do in all areas of our life. That means on your job. That means within your household. That means when you are out and about doing whatever you're doing. Everything that you do must reflect of the most high. Why? As we read earlier, you are a living sacrifice for the most high. Everybody should be able to see the most high through you. I'll tell you this. If you can walk into a room and not change the atmosphere, then there's a lot more that you need to be doing. I've seen it. You know when a person can walk into a room and the shift, this, it just changes. You know it. But you are supposed to be that person. You, you right there. You are supposed to be that person. And that's what you need to strive towards. Strive towards perfection. Purified, as the scriptures say. Okay? So now, I'm going to ask y'all a question here. How do you protect yourself from evil people? How do you do it? How do you do it? Because you're, you are able to. How are you able to protect yourself protect your children, protect your family. How are you able to protect them from evil people, evil spirits, evil entirely? What are we about to find out right now? You already know we got the answer. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 10, please. The book of Matthew chapter 10, and I want you to go down to verse 16. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. You have heard this so many times. You've heard it in Christianity and they've taken this and watered it down to Kool-Aid with no sugar. Let's read this. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You've heard it and heard it and heard it. But has anybody ever really broken this down here to you? Do you, if I was to ask you the question right now, do you really know what that means? If I were to tell you, hey, break this down for me, would you be able to do it? So let's just go ahead and break this down. Behold, that means pay attention. Look, I send you forth. So this is Christ talking. He's talking to those who are in the truth. I send you forth. He is sending you. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Now, Christ, he's the sacrificial what? If you said lamb, you are 100% correct. The sacrificial lamb. What is another word for lamb? Sheep. 
So Christ is putting you on the same level that he is. I'm a sheep and that's how I look at you as a sheep as well. And I'm sending you in the midst of wolves. Now, what is the purpose of wolves when they travel in packs? Remember, he's sending you into that pack of wolves. What is the nature of a wolf, especially when it sees a sheep? To kill, to destroy, to feed. Now, if you're not picking up on this, Christ is like, first of all, I send you out there. Why? Because you are protected by the most high. You don't have to fear that. You don't have to fear it. But you do need to be smart. I send you out. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Why? Did he tell you to be wise as a serpent? Now we know all throughout this book when it refers to serpents, that's talking about what? That's talking about evil. And that's how it's usually referenced. But Christ is not talking about that. He's actually talking about the nature of the animal. He talked about the nature of the wolves. What is their whole purpose to do? To travel in packs, to eat, to destroy you. But when it comes to a serpent, in the midst of danger, what does a serpent do? Scatters fast, flees, runs. A snake will only sit there and fight you if it feels that it can beat you. You see, because a snake, serpents, they know. They know their adversaries. They know who they can beat and they know who they can't. And when it comes to the ones that they can't, for, in, in other words, when snakes know that there's hawks and eagles and carnivorous birds that will reach down and, and grab them with them claws and take them and eat them. What do they do? They gone. They flee. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. What do doves do? Come on now. This is why the Holy Spirit was compared to a dove. It's not a dove. It was compared to when doves descend. When a dove comes down or whatnot, it comes down, it goes, it goes to eat. And what does it do? It goes away. Flee. You know how skittish a dove is or a bird is when you go to chase it? What does it do? It flies away. Flees. And that's what the Most High is telling each and every last one of us, including me. Whenever we see this danger start to come, whenever we see these damn parasites of people, the Father says, bounce on that. That is not for you. That is not your steeds. That has nothing to do with you. Flee, run, get away from it. Use your discernment. He gave us that Holy Spirit to put on us and it's called the law. If it's outside of the law, you are to have nothing to do with it. But yet we fall right down back into the category of, well, you know what? That's my friend. That's my son. That's my daughter. That's my mom's. That's my pops. That's my brother. That's my sister. I want to help them when the father said, run, flee, get out of there. But yet we deal with the world. That's exactly what the father said. You are in the world, but you're not of it. You're not of the world. I did not build you that way. You have a purpose. So that I can work my wonders through you. Do you know how many opportunities were shot down because the Most High wanted to work his magic? He wanted to work his wonders through somebody. And they went ahead and just committed sin and absolutely useless purpose. And y'all wonder why we see so many of our people falling and dying by the day. All of this judgment taking place. If y'all haven't realized, the Most High is out there cleaning up, man. He is out there cleaning up. He is not playing and he is showing all of his children. I'm not playing with y'all. This judgment is not coming. It's here. And I'm, I'm going to continue to weigh y'all out. 
just like I said I would. All right? Now, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 11, please. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, and let's go to verse 11. I want to do this backwards on purpose, okay? Hold on. I want to do this here. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. Watch this. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Let's read down that Rolodex one more time. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. The Father went ahead and gave us a checklist of the things that we need to be doing when we are following after the right things. So now, what did he say? Flee. Remember the serpent. So now that we read that, stay in the very same chapter, but I want you to go to verse 3. Because you have to see this, because believe it or not, there's so many of you who are under false teachers. Whether it be in your house, whether it be to a camp that you go to, there's a lot of false teachers. So let's see what the scriptures have to say. Not my opinion. Let's see what the scriptures have to say. Watch this. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. There's only one doctrine, only one, and it's right here in the scriptures. It's right here. It's in this book right here that we're reading right now. There's only one. Nothing outside of that. That means somebody taking the scripture and trying to fashion it and finagle it into their understanding. This is why the father said precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Because you can always go back to the scriptures to define everything. So don't be taking everybody for their word. You tell them, show me in scripture and show me a precept. Verse four, he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Do y'all hear this? And destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. The father told you, get away from people like that. Run. Get away from those type of people, they're not for you. That's why I wanted to read verse 11 first so that you can see the comparison between the two. Let's go back to verse 11 real quick. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Now, let's go back to verse 4. Now, he is proud. Now, we learned about that last week. Knowing nothing but doting about questions and strife of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. There it is. Boom. Plain as day. Plain as day, crystal clear. And let me tell you what a lot of us are still dealing with. And this is where I said we're going to start having some grown folk conversation. We have these people in our lives knowing that our discernment has told us stop dealing with them. But yet we still want to be in the world. We still want to help these people and we bring them into our home. And that's the biggest mistake that so many of us make. We bring them in our home. We bring them in our area. We bring them around us. And those evil spirits that are on those people suck the life out of you. It's draining. Not only you, but you, a lot of you sisters, y'all bring these whole ass women around your sons and your daughters. And that particular spirit just happened to start enticing them. I'm telling y'all right now, let me tell you, I was a young man myself. I'm telling you. And you have a lot of these, these, these women, these older women that be looking at these little young boys. 
When you go in the room or whatnot and they sitting there and they'll flash them and do something like that to grab their attention. Next thing you know, this little young man there is digging out your friend. That's real. 100% real. And then some of y'all will bring these no good niggas into your house and he's sitting there looking at your daughter and nowadays looking at your son too wanting that booty. And Tyson. And a lot of y'all like to call it bad energy. It's not bad energy. That's spirit. That's evil spirit that you introduced. I'm telling y'all, man. And then want to cry later when the Most High was like <laughs> trying to get your attention, but yet you bringing these horrible people, these disgusting, just vile natured animals into your home. And remember, the devil is going to make everything look pretty. I'm not talking about Satan. I'm talking about devils. He's going to make, or she is going to make everything look pretty, nice and pristine. Gonna put it on the greatest platter that you've ever seen. And they're gonna present that to you because no one is going to offer something to you that's not enticing. It's true. If you put a pile of shit on a crystal plate, I'm not eating it. I don't give a damn what it's on. Because I'm looking at it and that shit. It's not going to happen. But the crazy thing is people look past the shit and they look at the plate. The whole forest before the tree type, whatever it is, metaphor. <laughs> and you just sit there and consume, 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 and then wonder why you're sick. When the father said, use discernment, I gave it to you. I gave you the building blocks for everything that you need. Well, what, what happens? In one ear, out the other. And then the father's like, what can I do? <laughs> Seriously, it is dumb. All right, so now. I want to go to James chapter 1 and verse 5, please. The book of James chapter 1 and verse 5. And James is such a great book to be in. James didn't play. James, he delayed it all down. James was just forthcoming and outright. All right, James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. I got to stop for a second. Do y'all understand what he's saying here? He said, if you lack wisdom, if you are not sure about something, go to the most high and ask him. That giveth to all men liberally and upbraineth not and it shall be given him. James made it very clear. All you have to do is go to the most high and ask him. Remember, this is his will. He wants you to, to carry out his will. If you're willing to do that, go to him. Ask him, talk to him. If you lack wisdom, father, where are these things? But now you have to put yourself in a position to be able to receive. So many people, they'll go out, they'll ask the most high stuff and they don't put themselves in a situation to hear his voice. How does the most high hear you? Keep the commandments. That is your direct line to the most high. Your branch to him. All you got to do is keep the commandments. Strive. Many of us fall. Get up. But some people, when we, you start keeping them, you fall, you stay down. And it's like, what's the matter with you? All right. Now, I want you to go to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, please. Now, some of y'all should be very familiar with Colossians 2 and 8. Listen to this. This is so simple. Beware. Stop. Didn't we hear the words behold the sermon and all that? And now you know what beware means. So many of you have seen posts on people's houses. Beware of dog. What is that telling you? Don't try. Don't try in this house. You're going to get your ass ate out by that dog. 
So now here is what Colossians is saying. Watch. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So what is Paul saying here in Colossians? He's saying, yo, listen, I'm warning you, I'm warning you, do not be following these people out here in the world. Do not be listening to these evil Christian pastors. Do not be listening to Steve Harvey and these comedians with their political agenda and all that. It doesn't mean anything. And I'm going to say this right now, and y'all going to get mad at me, and I don't care. You sisters, y'all are really guilty of this because y'all will go to just about anybody. And let me, let me rephrase that. I'm not talking about every woman. I'm not talking about every woman. I'm talking about some of you sisters. Some of you sisters will go and you will hear advice from either your girlfriend. And let me tell you about that right now. For anybody that listens to a woman out there that's in that world, you are the stupidest person on your block. And I'm going to tell you why. You are getting counsel from a female that, number one, is not in the truth at all. And yet... This downtrodden scumbag of a woman is out there giving you advice from the world and then a lot of y'all will take it. So let's read that one more time. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. He made it very, very clear. Paul made it clear. You need to follow after Christ. Why? Because Christ was after the most high. That is his son. He came down here to tell us how to keep these commandments. And a lot of brothers, oh, you know, I'm not leaving us out. You know what a lot of brothers do, what a lot of brothers are guilty of? Hmm? Not even listening to another brother. Because that is rare in Israel. For a man to listen to another brother, to sit there and have brother to brother counsel. And I'm talking about brothers in the truth. You know who they'll go and talk to? You know who they'll go talk to? They'll call, they'll go talk to some stupid ass woman. Oh yeah. You receive counsel from a woman that's not in the truth. You see, why does that happen? You gotta ask yourself, why? Why do we do that? Why do we do that? You know why? Because that's the way the world taught us. Because remember, the world has gotten rid of the black man, the Hispanic man, the Native American man in their household. So what we always program to do, go talk to our mother. It's all by design, it's crafty counsel. But yet men won't go talk to other men that's in this truth. And I'm not saying everybody, I'm not saying all men. Some brothers, some and if you are guilty of that, you need to stop. You need to go talk to your brother. Like I said, I always offer myself. Go have a conversation. As many of you already do with me. For those of you that haven't, I, again, I'm ringing that bell and be like, yo, y'all can always reach out to me and talk. For anybody and for everyone right now that I have spoken to on a personal level, on Instagram, or we know each other, Am I lying about this? Back me up. Back me up here in the chat right now. I talk to everybody. And I don't hold no judgment because I was a no good piece of shit at one time myself. Who am I to judge you? I can't judge you as a person. No, 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 no. Let me, let me rephrase that. I cannot condemn you, but I can judge you by your actions. And that is what we always refer back to. We have to go back to these scriptures. Why? Because that's a part of discernment. All right. So now I want you to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, please. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to go down to verse 13. And we're about to wrap this up here in a little bit. Watch this. And this is plain as day. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, 
It is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Here it is. Let us know again. You're going to have people out there. This is that vain deceit. If they're not coming out this book, they're not worth your time at all. If they're not coming from this book and, and if their life is not reflection, is not reflecting the actions of righteousness. But then again, remember who we surround ourselves by. The people of the world. And not the people of the truth. And that's just real. That's real. Y'all know it's real because many of us have had that conversation. I'll ask you right now. I'll ask you. I'll be like, well, why are you still dealing with that person? Why is this person still a part of your life? And I've heard excuse after excuse, but never heard. You know what? I'll boot them out. <laughs> but, all right. What's well, your funeral? Now, I want you to go to Proverbs chapter two, please. That's right. The book of wisdom. Proverbs chapter two. And I want you to go down. As a matter of fact, start at verse one. Always like starting at the beginning so we can always get the context of what things are saying. Proverbs chapter two, verse one. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. That broke that down. Mwah! Menifee. What the father say? He's like, yo, listen, man. If you come looking for me, you're going to find me. As much as, as much as diligently possible, come look for me. And how do you do that? In his word. Father, what am I supposed to do about the situation? It's in the word. Father, I'm having such a horrible time with my children. The answer's in the word. Father, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get real right now. Father, you know, she's throwing an ass at me. Oh, my goodness. Father, what am I supposed to do? She's throwing it. And Father, you know I want it. The answer is in the word. Father, you know what? I hate my husband. I don't like him. But there's this other dude on my job. And he's saying all the right things. And I want him. Father, what should I do? The answer is right here in his word. Mm-hmm. Was that too real for some of y'all? We've all been through it. <laughs> We've all been through it. All of us. And that includes me. I'm still a man. And there's things I still have to fight. And that's just real. I already told y'all. I would much rather y'all learn from my mistakes <laughs> than me try to sit here and try to present myself as this faultless nigga. Please. There are things that I still have to battle. Still. But I can tell you this, though, from experience, the battle gets easier and easier and easier. And you know why? Because I have learned discernment. I have learned that there are certain people when they come to you, you feel that spirit on them. It's like, nah, nope, I might. Yeah, I got to go. It was good seeing you, but I got to roll. And a lot of y'all need to have that attitude. Bounce. Flee, run. Well, a lot of y'all like to sit there and, and, and play around with it. You can't do that. All right, let's go over one chapter. Uh, Proverbs chapter three and verse one. And I want y'all to see this. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Do you see what that just said? For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Meaning you. You keep the commandments and those things are guaranteed to you. A long life, 
peace and length of days that's given to you when you keep the commandments. Now, as we saw in the videos earlier, what happened? Did they have long days? Nope. Did they have peace? Nope. He stabbed her up and the other one shot him up. There ain't no peace there. Why? They weren't keeping the commandments. The Bible is real. You can't get past it. Verse three, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. When you keep the commandments, the Father said you're going to find favor from him and also from man right here on this planet. Verse five. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. So that goes right back to Colossians 2 and 8. Do not be listening to these idiots as they come to you with their vain deceit, as they come to you with their little metaphors. It's all in the book. Get your answers from the book. In all thy ways, in all thy ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. He says it again. Flee, run, run, run. Whenever you see that come up, run. Whenever you see that ass and titties coming to you and you know you can't do nothing with that, run. When you see this brother coming to you, he's handsome and he's about to spit that game to you and you already know how you ladies get. Y'all already know how y'all are when a handsome nigga's coming to y'all. Y'all want to sit there and be entertained. Run! How many of you will? Now, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. The book of Hebrews chapter four and verse two. And I'm going to tell you this right now. For those of you who are, who are mad at me, good. Hebrews chapter four, uh, go to verse 12. Hebrews chapter four and verse 12. Watch this. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's all here in the book. It's all here in the book. It's all here in the book. All you have to do is go to the book and read, study to show thyself approved. If you want the answers, if you want to learn how to build your sensitivity to discernment, all you have to do is get in the book. I can't say this to y'all enough that you have to pick up the book, not only on Friday nights. You have to get in here and read. All right. So now go over one chapter. I'll go down to verse 14, Hebrews chapter five and verse 14. Watch this. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Your senses. That's why I mentioned the sensitivity so that you can become sensitive to discernment. Y'all don't realize what discernment truly is. That is a superpower. That is a power that you have to when somebody want to come walking up on you and you feel that they're almost a sickening feeling like, mm, no, get back. Get your ass away from me. Nah, I gotta go. I gotta go. I can't. Mm, 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 mm. Nah, nah. I can't be around you. I don't want to be around you. I gotta go. You are a detriment to my existence. You are a, the you are the nail in my tire. You are draining my life. You're draining the air out of me. I cannot have you around me. I don't want you around me. You do not deserve to be around me. Do y'all realize that? These individuals don't deserve your time. They don't deserve your love, your attention, nothing. If they're not 
in the truth, you bring it out to them. And if they don't accept it, bounce on them. Now, let's go to Philippians chapter 1, please. Yep, let's go to Philippians. The book of Philippians. Uh, do I want to do Philippians? Yeah, I do want to do Philippians chapter 1. Go down to verse... You know what? Go down to verse 9. I, I want to do this one. Yep, I want to do this one. Watch this. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. This comes right back to discernment. That ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. I'm going to read this last part one more time. That ye may approve things that are excellent, that are excellent, meaning that you are not to accept no BS. Excellent. You are excellent. Do you understand that? You are excellent when you keep the commandments. So when niggas be coming to you and be like, do you think you better than me? Yes. Yes, nigga, I do. Not only do I think it, I know it. I'm keeping the commandments. I'm living in righteousness and you're living in sin, nigga. I'm better than you. Oh, I know that sounds so harsh, don't it? But I'll tell you this. It's true. I'm going to read verse 10 one more time. That ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Meaning that the time that you're here all the way to the day of Christ, that there's no, no offense found. And we all know what's happening on the day of Christ. We all know what's going to go down. And what's going to go down? Murder, bloodshed, blood spilled, blood all the way up to the horse's bridle. That's happening. And your blood don't have to be spilled. As we read earlier, the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. You have the weapons to kill niggas right now. Get them out your life. Get them out your life. They don't belong there. So now we're going to go to John chapter 7 and verse 24. We're going to wrap this up. The book of John chapter 7 and verse 24. Watch this. Watch what this says. Out of the mouth of Christ. So easy. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Ooh. And how? How do we judge that righteous judgment? What well, we do earlier, remember? Because you are to present yourself as a living sacrifice for the Most High. You look to see who's keeping the commandments who, and who's not. You can first take a look at their countenance. First and foremost, did they wear fringes? Okay, that's a part of the law. We know we're supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. We know we're supposed to do that. Now, when it says here, I'm going to read it one more time. Judge not according to the appearance. Stop. That means that for those certain individuals, everybody may not be able to afford certain types of fringes and stuff like that. Everybody may not be able to do that. Some people cut up the fringes at the bottom. Some people have the fringes like I have right here. I'm not sure if y'all can see this. But this right here, they have that. Some people have smaller fringes, bigger ones. It don't matter. That's what you're not judging it on. But you are to pay attention to their countenance because that is a part of the law. I just want to make sure that we emphasize that. I'm going to read that one more time. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. You have a responsibility for yourself, for your children, for those around you, to be able to discern Warn your brother or sister. Warn them about what's coming. Warn them about this person, this dirty little scumbag individual over here, male or female. And you tell them, you better get out. You, you better not allow that to happen. But, 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 but if they start to partake with these individuals, then you remove yourself. I got to go. I can't be around this. Why? Because the most I said flee. So when you don't do that, guess what you're doing? You are sinning when you don't. I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that Christianity and even some camps have not bought out when it comes to these things here. You cannot be around certain people. It is a sin to be around certain people. You cannot be unequally yoked with people. 
discernment. Run. Run. Because I'm going to tell you this. Devils don't chase after people, Israelites. They don't chase after Israelites that they know that they are not interested in what they have to offer. And I don't ever want you to forget that. Israel. I'm so glad you was able to bring this one out here. And I really hope that this is going to affect a lot of you and help change your situations. Because a lot of you are caught up in situations right now that you shouldn't be, but you didn't use your discernment and now you are. But now that you know what you're supposed to do, I really hope you change your situations. And the one thing that many of us don't do, as we mentioned earlier here, we don't talk to the most high. You don't talk to him. Go to him and talk to him. That's our father. Talk to him. Say, Father, please allow me, give me the strength to keep these commandments so that you can hear me and get me out of this situation, please. Y'all have to do that. If you don't, then it's like you're just fooling yourself. But y'all don't need to be up in these situations with certain people. I'm telling y'all right now, a lot of you are suffering from stupidity. And you are. It, it, it is what it is. It's stupid. Because you're in a situation with somebody, and I don't even mean like relationships or they can be platonic, sexual, whatever it is, but y'all in these situations that you shouldn't be in, and yet you choose to stay there. That's just dumb. That's, that's idiotic to me. And it is. I've been there too. I've been in situations where I'm like, okay, you know what? Damn, it's so hard to get out of it until I realize it's not hard to get out of this. Go, leave, get out. And I did. Peace. <laughs> and a half a peace sign on the way out. <laughs> and for those of you that know what a half a peace sign is, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Bye. Seriously. Do y'all realize how special y'all truly are? I'm serious. I'm being dead ass serious when I say this. I don't think our people really understand how special we truly, truly are according to the scriptures. Deuteronomy 7, 6, Deuteronomy 14, 2. There's so many different, different things, so many different scriptures that tell us, but we are still so destroyed up here that we really can't accept that because when we look around, we don't see it. But the thing is, as the father says, he is to work wonders through you. So you have to make yourself available to the most high to allow him to do that so that your beacon of light can shine to bring other people into the truth. That is your purpose. You are special. You are a God on this earth. You have the ability. You have the capability to be so much better. You have to want it though. And nobody's going to give it to you. You have to work for it. You have to earn it. But when you do, your light will never be turned off. And with that being said, Israel, I love you. I'm out.